Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do something kind of different because you see I picked up a dead game on Craigslist and it's outside sitting in my car and you know what we're gonna do we're gonna get this game working in real time I am confident that I can get this game working in this video I haven't touched this game at all and I guarantee you by the end of the video this game's gonna be working and you know why we're gonna do this because I want you guys to learn that you should go out there and buy dead games and don't be afraid to buy dead games well for one you're gonna save yourself lots of money because if you buy someone's junk that they can't fix you're gonna save money you're, you're doing them a favor by taking the game off their hands and two it's very rewarding and I think fun to fix this stuff and to learn it and to figure it out and a lot of times once you just get the basics down like what we're probably gonna cover in this video you're gonna realize this stuff's pretty simple to do so all right so anyway let's go to the garage I picked up this game on Craigslist it was kind of a crazy impulsive purchase but you know what, I know we're gonna get it to work. So let's go out in the garage, let me show you guys what I just picked up, cause it's in the car, and let's go take a look. Let's go to the gay garage. All right guys, here we are. And here is the game that we picked up. This was on Craigslist today. It was kind of a stupid impulse purchase, but the price was right. And I said, ah, what the heck? So I went and got it, and I purposely not removed it from the car yet. Um, this is how I picked it up. I put it in my SUV, and a lot of people, you know, wonder, how do I haul a game? Is it safe to put it on its back? And the answer is yes. I have hauled countless games in this vehicle on their backs just like this. And uh, you just gotta make sure the monitor is secure before you lay it down, because you don't want the monitor to come off and come crashing onto the back door you can break the neck you could do all kinds of horrible things to that monitor so before you lay it on its back make sure everything's secure make sure nothing is loose and then you can just tilt it back into an SUV and this is just a you know vanilla Explorer and it holds these games perfectly and I've actually hauled almost all of my games in this car right here so all right let me get this game out and let's take a look at what we picked up today all right guys, here it is. This is the Data East Commando. And why did I get this game? I don't know. <laughs> it was, it really was uh, an impulse purchase. It was really cheap on Craigslist. Um, I talked to the people, they said it was working and then it stopped working. They think it's a fuse. So I go out there and I'm gonna give you a little hint here, uh, a little tip rather. When you go to look at these games, don't plug them in, okay? Don't work on them there. Because if you get it going there, the price might suddenly change. Um, so I went there, I looked at it, the thing was solid. I didn't touch it. I said, okay, fine, I'll take it. I put it in my car and here it is. So we're gonna go through this um, together. I mean, I've never plugged this game in. I don't know what's gonna happen and we're gonna troubleshoot this game and see if we can get it to come back to life. Now the people, like I said, they told me the game doesn't work, nothing happens. The guy said the monitor comes on. Um, but the game just doesn't work. And Commando, you know, it's, it's an okay game. It's a Data East game. I guess it was developed by Capcom. Um, it, this cabinet actually has a lot going for it. It's not a bad looking game. Uh, it, it's actually in pretty good shape, to be honest. Uh, Coin Door looks pretty decent. Uh, somebody installed a light switch here. What the hell is that all about? I, I've seen this before, but I've never actually had a game with a light switch on it. Um, I guess this was a, a, an easy way for, so, for someone to turn it on and off in a, in a home situation. Uh, the control panel overlay here looks pretty tight. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is original. God, that looks actually really good. Look at that. And we've got a grenade button and the Tommy gun uh, button and one and two player start. Uh, the bezel looks pretty good. The marquee looks decent. Uh, the sides look actually very clean. Um, 
Looks like there used to be, no, I don't know. There's like some lines here, like there used to be site art. Um, there was like this generic Data East site art. I wonder if this game had it at one time. Um, it's got a Data East serial number. So I believe this to be an original uh, Commando game. Someone did a little Bondo work back here. That's interesting. Uh, the back door is held on with this little crude mechanism here. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, so let's open it up and take a look inside. Um, I did look at the insides when I was at the people's house because I just wanted to make sure everything was here. And I didn't want any surprises when I got home. Um, it has a, a 4900 monitor, which is good. This is a Wells Gardner 4900. That's a terrific monitor. It's got a little bit of burn. Not too bad here in the front. We can see there's a little bit of commando burn. Um, you can kind of see that there. Uh, let's see what else is going on back here. We've got a switching power supply. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test those voltages here. Um, the, the owner told me that they, they messed around with these fuses here, and he replaced this one, and there was a fuse here he replaced. So we'll keep that in mind when we're going through this. Um, we've got an isolation transformer right here. That is for the monitor, uh, because these monitors, uh, these older monitors require an isolation transformer. You can't just plug clean AC through it, um, direct AC. It's got to go through that transformer first. And I'll be honest, I've never really fully understand what that means. Uh, but uh, yeah, the monitor has to go through this. Otherwise, you can you can ruin the monitor. And we have the PCB here. Um, it looks all original, legit to me. It's got the Capcom sticker here um, because this game was developed by Capcom and released by Data East. And we've got some kind of adapter here. Uh, maybe this is a filter board, actually. I don't know, is this a JAMA adapter? What is this exactly? Maybe this is JAMA on the top? Yeah, I think it is. I think this is a, 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 a Data East or Capcom to JAMA adapter, is what I suspect. I'd have to check the pinouts, but uh, it looks like this this edge connector here is a proprietary maybe uh, Capcom or Data East plug and then it goes to this board which converts it to JAMA. I'm not really sure. I'd have to research that. Um, so yeah, everything looks pretty clean and uh, no water damage which is a plus. So I think we're ready to just kind of plug this thing in. Let's see what's going on up here in the coin door. Any little surprises or anything. Uh, oh, look at this. Uh, oh, so we've got a little goodie bag here. We've got the original manual. That's a bonus and a bunch of fuses. So cool. That'll come in handy. All right, so I guess that's the cabinet. Oh, actually there's a uh, there's a coin counter down here. And this game has 106,944 plays. Wow. So if we're to do the math uh, multiply that times 25 cents US and uh, God, I don't know. What, what is that? About 2,500 bucks? Uh, I'd have to get a calculator. Uh, so yeah, this thing has definitely made its money. 100,000 times 25 cents is what? Is that 2,500 or $25,000? Has this game made $25,000? Can that be? <laughs> so, I don't know. All right, let's let's plug it in and let's see what happens. This is going to be the moment of truth here, and uh, this is really the only way we're going to find out what's going on. Look at this cord here. So this is suspect. <laughs> so, wow, someone has been hacking this thing up. So, all right, let's see what happens. We're going to plug it in, and nothing yet. Okay. So uh, I noticed right here we have a, uh, a switch here on the back, uh, and we're going to pull this out. Which should, See, this switch here, oh my God, the name of this switch is escaping me. Uh, this switch is a safety switch that basically cuts the power of the game when the back door is removed, and that's so you don't get shocked, and it's kind of uh, a little overkill. Um, so when you pull, when you push, when the back door is here, this switch gets, this is called the interlock switch, excuse me. This interlock switch is a safety switch. So when the back door is removed, the power is killed. When the back door is on, this switch is pushed in and it turns the power on. Now when you remove the back door though, you can pull it out and that should turn the power on. Now we've got nothing. I, the monitor's not coming on. I, I hear no sound or power or anything. So no signs of life just yet. Now you remember there's this stupid switch on the front here. Let's turn this on. 
All right, something just happened there. Okay, so the marquee light is now on, and I believe the monitor just turned on. And let's see if we have some neck glow here. So let's see what's going on here. And we're doing this together here. Okay, so the monitor's on. So the monitor's working. That's good. There's no picture, okay? So now the first thing we're going to have to suspect is this power supply. And we want to see what kind of voltages, if any, we're getting on that power supply. So why don't I set up a tripod and let's, let's test those voltages and let's see what's going on here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is we want to check the voltages on the power supply to see if we're getting the needed voltages that voltages that this board needs to work. Um, and the most important voltage is typically the 5 volts. So we're going to take our multimeter and we're going to put it on DC volts, okay? And this is a pretty good multimeter. This is a Fluke 117. Um, you don't have to have a really great one. You can get a cheap one at Radio Shack, but you need a multimeter that can, that can measure DC volts, and they all do. Um, so we've got it set to DC volts here and let's kind of set this there so we can kind of see what's going on um, all right so uh, let's see if I can put this somewhere so we can get it in the camera while I'm testing this can we find the spot and uh, of course the power is on right now so we want to be a little careful we don't want to shock ourselves um, if you look on top of the power supply um, the inputs are labeled okay so we've got five volts right here. This tab is five volts. We've got a ground. We've got 12 volts. We've got a ground. We've got negative five volts. And we have AC in uh, field ground and then AC in the other, the other side of that, positive and negative. Um, I guess there's no positive and negative, whatever, the, the common and, and, and the voltage, whatever, for AC. So, um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to test the 5 volts right here, okay? And we're going to test that by taking our, our leads. And let me kind of zoom out here so we can see the multimeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, maybe we can come up a little more so you can really see what's going on. And, uh, er. okay, so I'm going to take my, uh, my leads here, and I'm going to put the black on what's labeled ground, and I'm going to put the red on what is labeled 5 volts. Okay, we do not have 5 volts. We have nothing. Okay, so that is a bad sign. So the next thing I want to test is is this thing actually getting voltage, okay? So we're gonna take our multimeter and we're gonna put it on AC volts, okay? Because what this thing does is it converts AC voltage from the wall into uh, DC voltage, which is what the board needs. So this five volts that we were testing was DC volts. So we know nothing's coming out of it. So let's make sure something's coming into it, okay? So now we've switched this to AC and I'm going to, uh, Take my uh, my leads here, and I'm going to put one on one AC tab and one on the other to see if this thing is actually getting voltage. And it is. Okay, we have voltage coming into this. Okay, so this power supply is potentially bad, or this fuse right here is bad. And I, I can I have to say I've never. Uh, seen one of these with a fuse like that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to unplug the game, okay? And we're just going to check that fuse out and see what's going on with that fuse. I, I've unplugged the game here before I do this. So let's take this fuse out. We know that we're getting voltage into the power supply, but nothing is coming out. So this is definitely our problem right here. Um, so this fuse... Why don't we go ahead and test this fuse, okay? And uh, I'm not going to test the fuse by visually looking at it because um, you have no way of really knowing if this is good or bad, okay? So I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to put it on continuity, um, which is this symbol right here on mine. And we're just going to basically take this and put it on either side. And if we have continuity between it, we'll get a beep and that means the fuse is good. Okay, that fuse is good. So... This power supply is hosed. Uh, we, can we can try to adjust the voltages right now. Why don't we do that, actually? Let's see if we can turn the voltage up and see if we can actually get 5 volts out of it. Uh, all right, I'm going to plug the game back in and turn it back on. And I'm going to see if I can adjust 
the voltages up to actually get five volts. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my leads here and I'm gonna put this back on DC. Now this multimeter also has auto sensing and I could put it on that. I don't, need, I don't need to keep switching between DC and AC. I actually like to put it on the DC setting because you get more of an exact reading. It goes to two decimal, actually three decimal points. Um, if you do the auto, it only goes to, I think, one decimal point. Uh, yeah, it goes to one. And if I go to DC, if I select DC, I get three decimal points. I get a little more exact of a reading. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and, and I just want to test my five volts again. And yeah, we're still getting nothing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust this five volt knob up, okay? And right now it's as high as it goes. And uh, let's see if we get five volts here. Uh, yeah, we're getting nothing. This power supply is hosed. So. Uh, luckily, I have one on hand, so why don't I go get a power supply and let's replace this power supply and see if we can get this game working. Okay, we are back and I went and got a power supply. I had a spare one in the basement. Um, this is a Suzo HAP power supply. You could buy these at Suzo HAP, which is formerly known HAP Controls. This is a very generic, basic power supply. Uh, these are about $15. They're very inexpensive. And I usually have one or two of these on hand. And, uh, and this is just their basic, basic, basic power supply. They do have one that's a little more deluxe that I use in a little more critical situations, like what I'm using with a MCR game or like a, a Gottlieb game. But for most games, this power supply is just fine. It's the Suzo Hap Power Pro. Um, and so what we need to do now is we basically need to, uh, we need to take these connections off of here. And by the way, the game is unplugged. You gotta make sure you unplug the game, especially when you get over here and you start messing with the AC lines here, um, cause this stuff will bite you. So make sure the game is unplugged before you do this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically just undo all these connections from this power supply and then make them on our new power supply. So let me set up the tripod here and uh, we're gonna just go ahead and do that. So let me, get this set up and uh, you know what I, I assure you that well, after we do this this, this game is going to fire right up and you can fix a lot of games this way guys um, you, you just you got to not be afraid to buy broken games I mean that's how you get these games for cheap you know you, you buy them from the person who doesn't or is scared to fix them and you buy them and you bring them home and you learn how to do this because this is what makes this hobby truly rewarding and also this is what makes this hobby affordable you know if you're out there buying pristine games you're gonna pay through the nose you know do the work yourself so all right let me get my screwdriver here and uh, I'll be right back okay so like I said we want to start uh, moving my connections from this to that and uh, actually I want to put the little brackets on here and by the way we're doing this all in real time you know <laughs> I, I have been doing nothing behind the scenes. This is from the moment we've taken it out of the vehicle to now. And uh, we're going to see if we can get this game working from Craigslist to the garage, from broken to working in like 20 minutes tops. Um, so I'm, gonna th I'm throwing the little bracket onto this guy right here because um, we're going to need this to mount the, uh, the new power supply to the wall. And uh, I'm kind of doing it off camera, aren't I? Uh, so here it is, and it comes with these little brackets. So let's just screw these on here. These little machine screws. And I can't do anything without my cordless screwdriver. So, you know, this game... I know I've played it. Did I play this on the NES Commando? I think I did. I know I've played it in the arcade. This is like one of those games like Akari Warriors and all that. And, uh, you know, these games were all over the place in the late 80s. Uh, let me get a smaller bit here. When did Commando come out? Was that like 88? 85, actually. Wow, it was a little older than I thought it was. For some reason, I thought this game was like 88 or 90 or something. But, you know, there was like a flood of these, these Japanese kind of top-down shooter games. 
like Akari Warriors, the SNK stuff. This, I guess this is a Capcom game, but uh, it's remembered as a Data East game because that's who distributed it. I actually didn't even realize it was a Capcom game because uh, when I opened up the back and I saw the Capcom sticker on there, I was like, uh, oh. I, was thinking, I had like dreams like, oh, maybe that's like a Ghosts and Goblins board or something. But uh, if you look at the marquee, it, it says Capcom on it. And I actually had no idea that was the case. All right, so we're getting these brackets on. All right, so we'll be ready to mount this to the wall when we get to that part. So, and I'm just gonna probably recycle the screws that, that are on there now. Okay, so let's start disconnecting stuff and reconnecting it on the other side on the other power supply. So the first one here is plus five, and on this one, plus five is pretty much in the same spot. So we're gonna go ahead here, and you should probably do these one at a time, because otherwise you'll just lose track of what's what. And this might be a little tricky here. I wonder if I could screw this in right now with these reach. I bet you they will. Uh, I should probably go get some screws. All right, let me grab some screws. Okay, I got some little wood screws here and I'm just gonna go ahead and just screw this thing to the sidewall here. And hopefully my little cordless screwdriver has enough juice. And I think this will make it a lot easier for us to transfer the old to the new. All right, so there we go. So now I think it'll be much simpler to transfer the old to the new here. Let's get in here. All right. Oops. Oh, wow. Okay. They've got little loops there, huh? Not the standard, like, Forks, they've got actual holes here, which is interesting. Um, this is gonna be, I need a little slack here. Is this gonna reach? All right, so the first one is plus five. And we're gonna have to take the screw all the way off. And just drop it in there. Okay, we got our plus five connection. And the next one here is a ground, which is the next one on our power supply as well. So let's pull out the ground. All right. And is this gonna reach new? No. Son of a gun. There, now it will. Okay, so this is our ground. And I might move this power, this new power supply back a little bit after we make our connections if it's too tight. All right. Ground, ground. tight in here. It's actually a little tight with this camera in my way too. <laughs> Let me see if I can put this camera in a different spot because I'm kind of having trouble getting in here. There we go. That gives me a little more room. All right. And it's hot out here. I'm sweating. Okay, we've got our ground there. And the next populated one is 12 volts. So let's undo our 12 volts. All 
Okay. And our 12 volts on the new one is actually in a different spot. It's right here. So just be careful that you put them in the right labeled spot on the new one because the pinout might not be the same. All right. Let's go ahead and screw our 12 volts in. That's on there good. All right, so the next one is minus five, which is right here. So let's go ahead and undo the minus five. And the minus five goes there. So you can see they're in a totally different order on this new power supply. So just pay attention to what you're doing when you do this, because it's not guaranteed that it's the same exact lineup on the strip. We're almost done. This isn't so bad. It's just a little awkward to work in here. Get in there. All right, we've got our minus five. Uh, the next one here is AC, okay. Again, make sure the cabinet is off before you touch this one. Make sure the plug is out of the wall. Because this is the stuff right here that will give you a shock. Um, and this stuff is not going to reach. You know what I'm going to do? Now, I'm, I'm paying attention here, okay? The white and the black are our AC, okay? And the green is our ground. So I'm, I could feel very confident now to just undo all these. And we're going to get the old power supply out of the way, and I'm going to move this new one back. Because we're stretching the wires to their limits here. Okay, and let's get rid of this old crappy dead one. And uh, there's going to be a screw on the bottom of it that I hope I can get to. Uh, and of course I can't. It's a freaking nut. You know what? I'm just pulling it off. There we go. All right, our old shitty one's out. So let's go ahead here and move the new one into the same position that the original was in, which was here. And this will ease up some of the tension here. Okay, so remember the green was the field ground, okay? So let's go ahead and do that one first. They see it right here, okay? And so I disconnected all of these. We had two whites, two and two blacks, and a field ground. Okay, so let's do the, gr the field ground first. And that's labeled FG on our new power supply. Okay, now let's make our AC connections. And I'm gonna keep the blacks with the blacks and the whites with the whites and uh, so let's come over here and let's get these two black ones and put that on our first AC in. Do, 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 do. All right. Okay, now we just have to do the white AC wires. And we're done. Is this exciting or what? Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, huh? Why is that so tight? A little tight. I'm going to move this back even a little bit further. All right. 
Man, I'm sweating like a pig out here. All right, where did our fucking little... Where did our screws go? Great. <laughs> Where did it go? Here it is. All right. So let's grab our two whites. And we'll put that in the last slot and then we are done. All right, that's it. So we have made all of our connections with the new power supply. The new power supply is installed. And uh, just kind of want to double check my work and just make sure nothing looks out of place. Um, everything's nice and secure. Nothing seems, this seems a little loose right here. Let me tighten that one down. You can see the screw heads is sticking out a lot taller than the other ones. Eh, I guess not. And everything's nice and secure. So we're ready to turn this game on. Um, I'm going to be a little extra cautious here. Uh, because this power supply came out of the box, I have no idea where that knob is. Okay, I don't know if it's on 7 volts or 5 volts or 3 volts because this knob right here, this adjustment knob, um, adjusts the 5 volts, okay? And if it's too high, it could take the board out, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually disconnect this, this cable here, this edge connector, just so we have no power going to the board. Now, I will tell you this though, that when this power supply is not under load, you do not get accurate readings, but what I, wa what I wanna do though, is I have no load, I wanna just test my five volts just to make sure it's, it's in the ballpark of where it needs to be before I plug the board into it. Um, I, you know, if it's like nine volts or something stupid, then I know I need to adjust it. So, uh, so let's go ahead here and uh, let's, let's turn the cab on with the board unplugged and let's check our five volts just to make sure we have a nice, a nice clean, uh, or nice, a good nice, uh, nice five volts. That's not nine volts or 10 volts. Okay, I'm gonna plug the cabinet in right now. And uh, here we go. You ready for this? All right, so again, the board's unplugged, so nothing's gonna really happen here. And we're gonna put our multimeter on DC volts. Okay, and I just want to get a five volt reading. Okay, so we have a red light on. That's a good sign. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, can you guys see the multimeter there? Kind of got a bit of a glare, huh? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my black on the ground and my red on the five volt terminal. And it's at 5.036. That is good, that is safe. I feel good about plugging my edge connector into the PCB. All right, so I'm unplugging the game. The game is now off, okay? And this is it, guys. We're ready to do this. We are ready to see if we just fixed this broken game that we got for dirt cheap on Craigslist in like 15 minutes. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and make our connection again at the edge connector on the PCB. So I'm gonna go ahead here and plug this back in. Because when you unplug this, you're, you're basically breaking the power. It doesn't get any power, so, and, and now it will. Okay, so we ready to do this? <laughs> I'm actually kind of excited. All right, let's, let's plug this bad boy in and let's see if we just fixed Commando. Oh, you hear that? Do you hear that? I hear it. I hear an attract sound. And there we go, the game works. We have fixed it. Um, the monitor is a little out of adjustment, but we can fix that real quick. It's a little cloudy. Uh, so let's go over here and uh, actually let's go look at it again after it warmed up here. So the game's working. The monitor is really out of adjustment. Um, and sometimes too, when it's humid out, the monitors will look like this, but I think it's just out of adjustment. So let's go over here. And on the flyback, we have uh, focus 
and we have uh, brightness here and we want to adjust the focus. I'm going to come over here. Maybe I can see. Let's see if we got anything. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. That looks pretty good. It's a little too bright. So let's just turn the screen down a hair. Oh, look at that, guys. That looks pretty damn good. Let me turn the light off. And uh, look at that. We fixed this game. So uh, the width here, the vertical size is a little off. I can see that. Uh, so that's an adjustment here. Vertical size right there labeled. So let's go ahead and just turn that a little bit and see what we get on the screen. Oh, yeah, look at that. We're filling the screen now. And let's just go ahead and turn the vertical size just a hair. And uh, look at that. Our picture fills the screen. And let's see if this game works. Let's, let's coin up and let's play as some commando, huh? Can you believe that? $15 power supply, just like that. Oh man, I remember this game too. This was a this was a, a fun game. Alright, so we got the tripod set all up here. And uh, let's coin up and I'll do a review later um, and we'll show you how to Oh look at that. Alright says press one or two players. Uh-oh. The one player start button's not working. We'll have to look into that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this game's awesome. I remember this game. It's like Akari Warriors, but without the directional stick. You know, like Akari Warriors and Heavy Barrel and all those, they had a rotational stick that you would rotate to, to point in the direction you wanted to fire. This game, it just fires in the direction of the guy. And let's see, this button throws grenades. Oh, there we go. Oh, this game's going to be a lot of fun, actually. It's too bad it's not like a two-player simultaneous game. Alright, so we got this game working. Oh, there's a prisoner of war here. Get him. Ah! Oh. <laughs> so, let's see if we can turn the volume up. Uh, where is the volume knob on this thing? It's probably on the PCB. Let's take a look back here. The coin door lights are out. I noticed that. The one player start button isn't working. Um, let's see, we got a volume knob on this PCB. I don't see one. That's weird. Oh, I wonder if the volume is in the setup screen? Huh. I can't, there's no volume knob on this thing. I wonder if there's like a test menu that you can get in it to turn the volume up. A lot of times on these newer PCBs, you'll see a volume knob here. And also you'll see them inside the coin door. Um, it's possible there's one inside the coin door. And here's the control panel. We're going to have to figure out why that uh, one player start button isn't working. It's probably something really stupid and simple. Oh, God, where? There's got to be a volume knob on this thing. Huh. I guess not. I wonder if there is a test menu we can get into. I'll have to look at the manual. going on up here in the coin door. There could be a service switch or something I overlooked. I don't see nothing. Nothing on the bottom here. Huh, I don't know. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to investigate that later, the volume. I'll we'll have to go on. Actually, we got the manual. Duh. <laughs> Should we see... Uh, we can quickly figure out how to adjust the volume on this thing. I'm all tangled up here. All right, let's see what's going on. All right, commando instruction manual. This thing looks like it's been in war. Uh, option switches, PCB identification. You're about to begin noise filter, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. 
Oh, there is volume control right there. Let's go look again on that PCB. It's on the opposite side of the dip switches. Oh, they're right here. Duh. Here it is. Here's our volume. All right, let's see how it sounds now. Oh yeah, much louder. Why isn't that one player start button working? Maybe we can open up this control panel here and go inside. It just started on its own. Okay, I went inside and I grabbed some 161 bulbs, so why don't we get the uh, coin door lights working and get this game at 100%. These are like the little things that bother me, actually. <laughs> I like to see the coin doors all lit up. Okay, there's one. And let's get the other one. Whoops. I'm just gonna slide this out. Like so, pull the old bulb out, and let's stick a new one in. All right, so that's that. So that's working. And the only other thing I wanna look at real quick is let's figure out why the one player start button is not working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this control panel. Oh the hell? That was weird. Huh. What just happened here? Why did the game just start? Let me die real quick. Kill me. Looks like the settings on this are pretty easy. There's a lot of lives. Alright, come on, kill me. It's on a two-player game. I'm gonna turn the game off with with the handy light switch, by the way. Alright, here's a little warning. Use and export of this game outside the country of the United States of America and Canada is in violation of copyright law and constitutes a criminal act. Okay. Alright, so. All right, so we got nothing happening here. There's no credits in the game. Um, so let's, let me open up the control panel like I was gonna do. All right, so, and it's just two latches on the inside, it almost always is. And this button here just did not wanna work when we hit it, so I'm gonna just check this out. And all I'm doing right now is just kind of unplugging and plugging back in the leaf switch. And make sure we get contact when it's pushed. And it's just really cobwebby in here. Um, all right, let's let's put one credit in. And uh, all right, let's see. We press the one player button. Nothing. Ah, these the contacts are dirty because when I pushed it back here, it worked. It's the contacts. All right, the switch is fine. It's just, it, the switch is just dirty. So what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna take a piece of cardboard right here. I just tore it off of uh, off the light box, and I'm just gonna go like this, and we're just gonna clean the contacts on here because this switch works. We just, I just was able to make it work. Okay, and we're getting contact. All right, let's try it again. I'm gonna coin up. Now let's press this button, and I bet you it works. There you go. All right, we fixed that. Okay, and uh, the only other thing I want to do, I, mean, I actually like this light switch in the front. <laughs> let's see if we can put this game on free play, and we have our manual here, which is kind of trash, but it's all here. 
So let's go through this and see if there's a free play mode. Uh, commando. Option switch settings is page number two. Okay, here we go. And, uh, oh, there's no free play. Let's see. Uh, these are the dip switch settings for, uh, for coins and credits. And, uh... It makes no mention of free play. We've got one coin, one credit, uh, dip switch one and two off, off. And number of lives are fighters. Uh, these Actually, we want to change that. Five and six should be off, off on switch A. Cocktail table, joystick, one, one way or two, two, what? Monitor reverse, difficulty, track sound. So, yeah, it looks like there's no free play in this game. That sucks. Oh well. Alright guys, that's it. That is it for us today. And uh, so yeah, we brought a game home dead from Craigslist and it is now working again. And uh, hey, pretty damn cool, right? And that was not bad at all. We just switched out the power supply. Um, we actually got the coin door lights working here. And we fixed a button. And just like that, that was pretty easy. And this game is 100%, and it looks pretty good, actually. That marquee's actually pretty badass. Look at that. I like that, so. All right, actually, before we go back down, I just want to show you guys. I took the uh, the bezel off and uh, the, the plexi, and we're just going to clean this down really fast because uh, this monitor is actually really filthy. And uh, I think the pitcher is going to... I'm doing it with the monitor on. I'm spraying in the middle, and I'm being really fast. Because I don't want to get any of this Windex anywhere else, but look at that. You know, when you get these games, you got to clean the monitor because I'm, I'm telling you, it makes a giant difference in the picture quality. Um, all right, let's just kind of go in here and clean this off. And you know what? Whoever owned this game, or I, gu I guarantee you this monitor has never been cleaned since this game was made. And look at that. And the picture is already looking better. So, I mean, I always just clean the hell out of my games when I get them. Because I just can't stand the filth. I mean, who wants a filthy, dirty game in their house? Look at that. So, yeah. Clean your games. Alright, I think that's it. We got the control panel back on. and I'm going to clean the plexi. I'll do that off camera, but... Uh, there you have it. And then the one more thing I do want to mention before we go here is I am going to be replacing that AC cord. Uh, I do not trust this power cord, okay? This thing is frail, it's, it's ugly, it's been repaired, and I might have gotten shocked by it when I was walking past it. So this is a fire hazard, guys. If you get a game and it has a cord that looks like this, Please replace it. I'm urging you. Um, you do not want that in your house. Okay, I do not trust that cord right there. And it's going to be very easy to replace, as you can see right here. And remember, the AC is on right now. I do not want to touch over here because I will get shocked. Um, but it's going to be very simple to replace the cord. I'll just go to Home Depot and I'll buy an extension cord or, or, or uh, uh, like a, an appliance cord that is going to have three wires, uh, the black and the white and the green, the ground, the common, and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the hot. And we're just going to make our connections here. And it'll be very simple to do. But if you buy a game and it's got a cord that looks like this, please don't use it. Um, I don't want you to burn your house down. So, all right, guys, that is definitely it for now. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And let's go back down to the basement. All right, guys, there you have it. That was the Commando Craigslist score. And the game is working. That was fun. Did you guys enjoy that video? So anyway, I, I want to thank you guys for subscribing to my little channel. I release new videos at least every Sunday. And sometimes in between like this one right here. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. Because if you do, you'll get a little alert when I upload a video. And you definitely want to keep up with my vids. Because I'm releasing them constantly. And there's lots of great useful information. That hopefully I, you guys are finding useful. So anyway, I also want to mention my podcast called The Video Game Outsiders. We do that podcast every Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern. On the All Games Radio Network at AllGames.com. So on Tuesdays, 9 p.m., 
Go to allgames.com, press the play button there, and our voices will come out of your computer, and you can listen live to the show. The show is called The Video Game Outsiders, and our website is videogameoutsiders.com. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this little Craigslist fix video, and we will see you guys next time. Later! Dun, dun, dun.